Hi, this is Nathan Mackey. March 4, 2008, I had the honor of giving my testimony at the Billy Graham Evangelistic Association in Charlotte, North Carolina. I hope that as you listen, you'll consider how God can use you when you put your heart in His hands. In John chapter 9, Jesus is talking to His disciples. And it says, As He, Jesus, went along, He saw a man blind from birth. His disciples asked Him, Rabbi, who sinned? Did this man or his parents that he was born blind? Neither this man or his parents sinned, said Jesus. But this happened so that the power of God might be displayed in his life. To start a foundation in my life, my mother as a little girl prayed to grow up in a Christian home. And she thought that a Christian home was a home where the whole family went to church on Sundays. But that was not the case. My grandfather was not a believer. And so she was... Hoping, praying for a Christian home. My parents met in 1969. My mother says, this is not the way, the way to meet your spouse. They dated for eight months, then married. I should mention that my father was in basic training through this eight month period. And then they got married after basic training. Two weeks later, he deployed to Vietnam. And my parents weren't believers at that time. He returned 18 months later. My parents came to the Lord in the 1970s. My mother was told, that she would never have children. So, in 1977, they adopted my brother while they were in Bible school. But in 1980, my mom found out she was pregnant. And I was born six months later, three months premature, had two pounds and ten ounces. I call that two-thirds baked. A couple weeks after I was born, I stopped breathing. The doctors were able to revive me, but they told my parents that the oxygen deprivation had damaged the part of my brain that controls my fine motor skills. They, they told my parents I had a condition called cerebral palsy and that according to them, I would never sit up, walk, run, ride a bicycle, or drive a car. And they never thought I'd fly an airplane. I had nine surgeries before I was 10 years old, had to learn to walk four different times and endured thousands of hours of physical therapy. But at growing up, I became angry at God because I had cerebral palsy. I thought, He allowed this to happen to me. Why should I give Him my life? I, he, he did this to me. And so I became angry and hateful and resentful. And unfortunately, I took that out on the people who loved me the most, my parents. I'd do something wrong and my mom would haul me in the bedroom, bang me, and I'd get mad at her and take a swing. So rebellious that I just wanted to hit my mom because I was so angry. And I must have spent about half my childhood getting a spanking or in time out. By the time I was 14, I was so riddled with hate and anger that I just wanted to die and I even considered killing myself. And I didn't want to live anymore. And I told my parents, I don't want to live anymore. I'm just, I'm tired of this. I don't want to go to church. Those people don't like me. How could they like me? I was as evil as I could be. And then my parents said, well, tell God this. Tell God the way you feel. I said, I'm not telling God anything. He, he doesn't want to talk to me. I don't want to talk to him. And they prayed for me and they said, after we pray, you can pray if you want. Started to pray. And I felt the Holy Spirit grab a hold of my heart in a way that I had never, ever felt before. And I just broke down. I said, God, I'm sorry for the mess that I've made of myself. I'm sorry for the hate and resentment that I have just fostered towards you. And if you can make anything out of the mess that I've become, I want you to do just that. And I tell you right now, He did. The psalmist says, The heavens declare the glory of God. The skies proclaim the work of His hands. Day after day, they pour forth speech. Night after night, they display knowledge. There is no speech or language where their voice is not heard. I knew that God loved me, but I didn't know how much until I took my first airplane ride. A missionary friend of mine arranged for me to take a ride in a helio courier airplane at the Jar Center in Waxo. As we took off and the world dropped away, I was totally amazed. I saw how small the world was and thought about how God wants to have an intimate relationship with all of us. I told God that day that I would do anything that he want me to, wanted me to do as long as he would just equip me to do that. In Romans, Paul writes, But who are you, O man, to talk back to God? Shall what is formed say to him who formed it, Why did you make me like this? Does, does the potter not have the right to make out of the same lump of clay some pottery for noble purposes and some for common use? I love flying, and I wanted to continue that, so I started taking flying lessons. And one thing that you may not know is the FAA requires a pilot to hold a medical certificate as well as a pilot's license. And on my first FAA medical examination, I was denied. 
and I thought my dream had come to an end. Every meeting that we have with someone, I believe, is a divine appointment by God. A year and a half later, God led me to a retired Navy flight surgeon who took an interest in my case and gave me an exam and wrote an extensive letter to the FAA regarding my case. The FAA approved my medical after nine months of waiting. Eighteen months later, I found myself with no job and a certificate from the FAA that was burning a hole in my pocket because I knew it was going to expire. And one day I was visiting the JAR Center trying to get some encouragement. And I told God, I said, what are you doing? I'm, I'm doing everything I'm supposed to. What? You've got to move. Please do something. I walked into the hangar and there stood a man I'd never met before. And as you guys know, I never meet a stranger. I introduced myself to him. And he told me his name was Alan Ike. And he was a Boeing 737 pilot for U.S. Airways. And he was also a flight instructor. And he asked me if I flew. I said, yeah, I do. But he said, well, let's go hop in the airplane. Let's go fly. And I flew around with him and he was just so encouraging to me when we landed he said i enjoyed meeting you i'd like to fly with you some more and as alan took off again for home my cell phone rang and the voice on the other end said this is daniel selner from the billy graham evangelistic association you interviewed with us a couple weeks ago would you like to start on monday within one hour god had provided a flight instructor and a job in answer to my prayer isn't that amazing Adam and I flew a lot over the next several months. Then on a Sunday morning in April of 2004, I landed the aircraft for the 10th time with Alan. And he told me, he said, okay, it's time for you to go by yourself. He said, I want you to taxi back, drop me off, and go have fun. I was still waiting for God to zap me because I didn't think I was supposed to be flying on Sunday. But I taxied out, ran through my pre-takeoff checklist, lined up on the runway, firewalled the throttle, roared down the runway, and lifted the aircraft into the air. And I I had done it. But it wasn't me, it was God. Because when you, when you put your life and your goals and your dreams and your hopes in the hands of the Master, that's what He does. But more than that, we serve a God who can take a little boy with cerebral palsy, filled with hate, anger, resentment, forgive him, free him, and mold him into a man that can be used to proclaim the Gospel through a ministry like the Billy Graham Evangelistic Association. Lastly, I want to share this verse with you. Again, Jesus is talking to His disciples. He said, when the disciples heard this, they were greatly astonished and asked, who can be saved? Jesus looked at them and said, with man this is impossible, but not with God, for with God all things, did you catch that? All things are possible. Thank you for giving me the opportunity to share this morning. May God richly bless each one of you today.